In the 70s, do you remember when men decided they didn't want to wear shirts and they had these leather jackets and they'd leave the jackets open? Did you oh, wear yeah. I hope you're not going to tell me you wore one no, of those. No, I didn't. I didn't. I was, I was uh, no, I didn't wear medallions or anything now. Okay. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Wine and More podcast. I'm your host, Howard Fletcher. And January has been quite a busy month for me. I hope it was productive for you as well. I have a new project to share with you and a fantastic guest today. So let's get this thing started. Why not go downtown for a bucket of napalm? Mac and cheese in the side of me. I want to go downtown for a bucket of deck bones. They're right next door. So last month, January, I started a new project. As many of you know, I not only sell real estate, but I'm a journalist and I'm a writer. So even though I have this podcast, which does help feed the journalists inside of me, I have to scratch that writing itch too. So I'm doing so by launching a blog. Yes, I'm I'm another blogger. And it will allow me to tie my real estate business in with my passion for meeting people, for telling stories, uh, broadening my horizons, and also community building. And it's called The Faces of Bethesda and Chevy Chase. I'll tell you more about that later. But my guest today is one of the first people that I will be profiling on that blog. Terry Christine is an intuitive energy healer, psychic medium, and a whole lot more. I met her when I was at the Bethesda Salt Cave interviewing my last guest, Anna Reeves of Tiny Chefs. As you know, I love to speak to people about topics that I know virtually nothing about, and there are a whole lot of topics like that. Terry is definitely a person who knows a lot about something that I know nothing about. And she and I had a very long conversation, so this is going to be a two-parter. I know you're going to love it, so with no further ado, here's my conversation with Terry Christine, Intuitive Energy Healer. Enjoy. Okay, well, uh, we're here with Terry Christine. Terry is an intuitive energy healer who I had the pleasure of meeting uh, with last week. She was uh, gracious enough to let me interview her for my blog, and now I'm interviewing you for my podcast. So, Terry, welcome to the show. Awesome. Thank you, Howard. I'm so honored and grateful. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm great. I'm very honored, and I'm grateful because along with being an intuitive energy healer, Terry also is a psychic medium. She's a speaker. She's internationally known and in high demand as a speaker. Uh, she's also the author of a book, The Secret Power of You, A Guide to Matching Your Inner Greatness. You know, Terry's also been featured on CNN, on Bravo, I think it was The Real Housewives of Potomac. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's been on the OWN Network, and so when you can put uh, Oprah on your resume, <laughs> that, that's a big deal. <laughs> uh, she's been a part of Hay House Radio, and that's only to name a few. So, Terry, again, let me uh, welcome you to the show, and I'm really excited to that you're here. Yes, this is going to open up some opportunities for people to see things differently and to really just um, highlight some of the things that maybe either you know some things about, don't know about, or just starting into. Okay. All right. Well, let's start there. Let's. What exactly is an intuitive energy healer? And I really want you, if you could, for me at least, define that adjective intuitive. What, what's, what is that about? So the intuitive part is trusting that inner knowing. I tell people like when you're in that warm tub and that warmth goes all the way to your bones, you feel that warmth, there's no doubt about it. Well, that intuition, that trusting inside of you, like you have no doubt about it. You, it, Like someone will say, oh, I'm going to give you a million dollars, you should do this with me. And inside your heart is saying, uh, this doesn't sound <laughs> right, but that million dollars feels good. But so, and if you trust that, you'll know that "Mm, that probably wasn't the way to go. But most people don't trust it. And they'll say, oh, it sounds good. They step into it. First thing they say is, 
I felt it and I shouldn't have done it. It's that gut feeling that people talk about. That's right. And so I work within my own feeling of trusting that which I feel. But I have these tiny little superpowers. I'm clairvoyant, I'm clairaudient, I'm clairsentient. So it allows me to hear, feel, and see. So when I connect to someone's energy, I'll close my eyes and I'll simply ask in my head, what are the strongest limiting beliefs that this person has? By whom do they have it? How old? Give me some information. And all of a sudden, I will start seeing a movie in my head. Now, within that movie, it's not like dad leaving the house. It could be two dogs going in circles and running out, of, out the door. So to me, dogs are loyalty. When I see something that goes in circles, it's the same thing over and over again. And running out the door, of course, is leaving. So I see the movie and I have to interpret that. Because of the length of time I've been doing this work, close to 13 years now, I see a lot of patterns. So I'm able, like I was saying, seeing things in circles, meaning doing the same thing over and over again. That's just a pattern that shows up in my mind so that I can describe those limiting beliefs. And then within that space, then I will help the person shift it within the physical body, which is their subconscious state. Wow. So... What kind, give me an example of why a person might come, what kind of problems do people come to you with and how do you treat them? So I kind of do a lot of different things that many people do as one. So as an intuitive energy healer, I will work with the energy. So I do a lot of work remotely. You can be anywhere in the world. There is no time and space with that. So I can heal and clear the limiting beliefs within your subconscious from a remote source or hands-on, face-to-face. When I do put my hands on you, many people also come to me with physical challenges. They may have back pain, shoulder pain, elbows, hips, whatever it is. I will put my hands on them, and I'm shifting the emotional state of that physical pain, and they walk away without the physical pain. I'm also a psychic medium. I spent five years on a psychic website, and I had a very strong following. Mm. And uh, so that was my psychic sandbox. I would play, have fun. I would make money from it (laughs) (laughs) because people would pay that per hour rate. And then, you know, I was able to see a lot of the patterns too. Again, Mm -hmm. no time and space. These people were all over the world calling in to a psychic website. And then as the medium, that gives me the ability to talk to dead people. Years ago, I used to say deceased loved ones until someone said, I didn't love that person. (laughs) They're just deceased, yeah. (laughs) So the various different things, like you'll find on some of the national networks, I'll give you some examples, a Long Island medium. You know, she does mediumship work. She talks to the dead And then you'll find the celebrity um, medium, which he's a psychic medium. He'll give the psychic premonitions that the deceased loved one or that dead person provides and gives some information about their future. And then there's the healer. So there are three different shows uh, currently that I'm familiar with, and I know there's more and more coming and are on other um, networks, but I'm I'm not just familiar with them. But then the healer does... Uh, heal, but he heals in a way where he's not putting their physical hands on the person, Mm -hmm. and he puts it um, in a together, and he moves it around, and then he closes his eyes, the eyes flutter, and he heals them, but it is all real, and so I just do all of that collectively, but in my space and how I do it. So how do you typically get your clients? How do people come to you when they want to come specifically to see you? I would imagine when you are on that, uh, the medium hotline or mm-hmm. or website mm-hmm. uh, they may have come to the website first how do they get in touch with you now mm-hmm. so there's many different ways I do have a lot of referrals I do a lot of mind body spirit events up and down the east coast I have a website uh, uh, Instagram uh, Facebook Twitter I mean all of those social medias I'm I'm actively engaged I have a YouTube channel that has Um, many, many, many videos on there of how to see your limiting beliefs, how to get rid of them, how to, you know, see things differently. So I'm helping everyone shift their mindset. But I do have various different locations that I work out of in the metropolitan D.C. area uh, and also my office in Bethesda. Let's talk about The Real Housewives of Potomac because I have to make a confession. I don't really watch uh, mm-hmm. reality TV that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, although I do because I live and work in this area, there 
they get quite a few people from the area on the show. Mm -hmm. So how did you get connected with them and what did you actually do on the show? I love that question because I'm a master manifester. Mm -hmm. What I do is I think it, I feel it, and I take guided action on it. So for years, I've been telling myself I want to be on national TV. I want to be on TV. I want to be seen. Because the work I do is an alternative way of healing from your past, but sometimes you can work out of a location and you're like a hidden gem. Right. And at the time, I felt like I was that hidden gem. And so I was working out of this particular location, and I walked in, and I... I help them answer the phone sometimes when there's nobody around. They're running around as busy, and so I picked up the phone. Hello, this is Bravo. <laughs> so I, that's exactly how it happened. Wow. So I answered the phone, and I answered a few of their questions and turned it over to someone else um, that was managing that because they had already called one other time and that I found out. And then I let it go. I got excited. This is how you manifest. So I got excited. I had been saying that I wanted it. I answered the phone. Wow, that's not a coincidence. I do not believe in coincidences. Many of you may call that a coincidence. Mm -hmm. And then I let it go, and I felt the excitement that I could be on it, and oh, how exciting. They're coming to the location that I was um, working out of. And then it was about two weeks later, and I didn't hear anything else about it, and I walked into the location again, and there's all this activity. And now I'm told, the girls with Real Housewives are coming in. Well, no one told me. I'm like, oh, that's exciting. So I'm standing by the door, and then the camera crew came in, the producer came in, they went all the way down to the end of the hall. So I'm standing at the door where they all directed me, which are the people that I work with, and just to wait till everything gets started. I had no idea, remember, that I knew what was happening. Mm -hmm. Next thing I heard, Terry, Terry. They're calling me from down the hall, the producer and the crew. So I walk down the hall, and within seconds, they're miking me up and telling me, okay, you're the chosen one. Wow. <laughs> and we're going to put you on the show. Here is what, and, it, and a lot of people do ask me, uh, is that real? It's reality. Mm -hmm. It's not real. Let me tell you, it really is real. What isn't is just where they're placing the cameras. Okay. So when we're walking in, you know, when let's say you had to open a door. They might have to stop us for a cameraman to be where we open the door and see our faces, and a camera person has to be behind us. So they may stop us as we're walking in. However, everything else happens as it happens. Okay. All they simply told me was a storyline. We'll be right back to return to my conversation with Terry Christine, and I hope you're enjoying it. But I just wanted to take a moment to invite you to check out my new blog, The Faces of Bethesda and Chevy Chase. On the blog, I'm going to be featuring people who live, work, and interact within the communities of Bethesda and Chevy Chase, Maryland. I do most of my business in the DMV there, and in my 19 years of working as a realtor in these communities, I've come to know some of the most interesting and passionate people with whom I've ever crossed paths. Now I'd like you to meet them too. So please go to the faces of Bethesda and Chevy Chase.com. Yeah, I know it's a long URL, but it's just like it sounds. Just write it out and don't use an ampersand. You can also get it through my Instagram, which is Howard Fletcher Realtor, or on my Facebook page, which is Fletch Lives and the number two, just like the movie, Fletch Lives 2. That's not an endorsement of the movie, but it's a pretty good name. I also have, will have the link to the blog in the notes for this podcast episode. So check it out. And now, back to the show. And I asked them, do you want me to make things exciting? Or do you want me to just do what I do naturally? Because I can kind of like stir up a few things. <laughs> and so they just told me to do naturally. And then I followed the storyline, which was simply... One of the gals lost both of her parents two months apart, and she was very angry to all the other girls, and the other girls were being nice to her, and they couldn't figure out why. So they brought me in to open up why she was being mad. And so, well, I was trying to work the angle of being the intuitive energy healer to put my hands on her, to help her lift some of the limiting beliefs. However, she made a comment that that I wasn't really fond of hearing. 
And so you'll have to watch the show, everyone. Okay. There's on the recording. But I wasn't really <laughs> fond of hearing what she said. And then I said to myself, how can I change this to turn out to a better ending result for all? And then I started feeling tingly. And tingling to me is a sign of a non-physical being presenting themselves. And then all of a sudden, I knew it was her father. And so I said, your father's here. And she started crying. And then the whole storyline, how I thought in advance, remember, this, I thought, okay, I can turn it into this. Right. But because it's just how the ebb and flow flows and the universe presents itself, it didn't go the way I was hoping. But it did turn into something really magical as well. Because her father was the last one who passed, and it was only several months before then, she had been missing him drastically so much that she was angry at, let's call it God or source, whatever you decide to choose. And she was angry that her father left her so soon after her mother left her. And so there I presented a, a message. Now, I, the message did not show up on the show, so they had um, only had a certain amount of time. But the storyline went that was cut. The father showed me this chain, a long chain. In the 70s, do you remember when men decided they didn't want to wear shirts and they had these leather jackets and they'd leave the jackets open? Did you oh, wear yeah. I hope you're not going to tell me you wore one no, of those. No, I didn't. I didn't. I was, I was uh, no, I didn't wear, wear medallions or anything now. Okay. Well, her father did. Okay. And when I saw in my mind's eye, I saw this long chain. <laughs> I saw a chest, and then I saw there was just an open jacket. So I started telling her a story. I said, hmm, your dad has a little something going on here. I said, I started telling her about the chain and everything and describing it. She started laughing. Well, right before her father came in, she had just changed the color of her hair. She went from a darker color to a blonde. And she's African-American, so she mm -hmm. was just talking about how she embraced her blonde hair. And, and then it was her story. Then, then it turned into the father, and he presented himself. Now, most of the time, older men back then were like, ooh, I'm debonair, I've got the gold chain and the jacket. So they were feeling a little sexy in themselves, right? That wasn't sexy back then? I thought it was sexy back <laughs> within, then. Well, within themselves, okay, right? Whatever right, that okay. was, that was yeah, sexy yeah. for them. Okay. And so then I heard, hey, that was my midlife crisis. What's yours? And it was so funny, we started laughing. But again, that, that's, that part of the story was cut. Mm -hmm. But she started laughing, and she said, oh, Dad, my blonde hair. So she was talking to him like he was present through me. And she became this very gracious, loving, the stories she was sharing. And that's not quite shown on the show. Yeah. But the girls are like that. And it just opened up for her to be softer. And then she changed after that. Hmm. They should give you a show. They should. <laughs> I'm waiting for that. Yeah, yeah. They should give you I'm a available. Show. Okay, I'm going to switch gears here a little bit. And because I know on your website, and we spoke earlier about your path to realizing these superpowers of yours. So can you give us a real quick background of, of there have been a few key moments in your life that uh, you looked toward when you talk about your journey. So tell us about that. Yeah, you know, the main one, there was one where my grandfather died and it opened up the opportunity for me to see, wow, that, that's really um, present. <laughs> I never knew anything about someone who could talk to the non-physical. I wasn't in that situation or in that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And then um, the main one was the end of a 14-year relationship when I just didn't want to live anymore because I had been giving a lot and giving and giving. And if you've ever been in a relationship where you're not receiving all the love that you give, you become resentful, angry, you become lonely. And I was all of that and more. And even though I had two beautiful, amazing little girls, it wasn't that intimate, deep love child love is different than that partner love and I wanted that partner love and so I had woken up at the end of the 14 year relationship and I didn't want to live and I cried 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 actually I cried every night for a past year <laughs> and then I gave up 
and said, I'm ready. So I got out of the bed, went to the bathroom, laid on the floor. I remember as if it was yesterday. Tiles were very cold. I closed my eyes and I gently felt as if I was floating. With my eyes closed, I could see stars so close I thought I could touch. It was just a very profound moment. I could feel dampness around me. I could taste it. And I heard three simple words, love will come. It was so profound. I couldn't tell if it was in me, around me, or standing in front of me, but it was very masculine and very clear and loud, vibrated. And then I swooshed back into my body. I went to bed and I woke up and my entire life changed. Wow. Yeah. So... When did you start manifesting these these uh, uh, gifts that you have? I mean, how did that come about? Yeah. Because it seems like it would be rather, I don't know, uh, scary maybe at first or, or unnerving or I don't know. You, what was it like? So when you're to the point where you don't want to live, there's nothing to be scared about, right? Because yeah, you're ready yeah. to give okay. it all up. <laughs> okay. So I didn't feel any sense of being scared. When I woke up the next day, I had a sense like it was you know when you're when you're when you have nothing left mm-hmm. and when someone says here's your drink of water to survive yeah i felt as if that's what happened i was given my drink of water and then i felt this hope the love that i had been so desperately wanting that it's coming yes and so i got up and went to bookstores and i started getting these books from authors that you may even know but wayne dyer esther and jerry hicks louise hay eckhart tolle i mean all these names i knew nothing about it wasn't part of my lifestyle mm-hmm. but i just grabbed them i had a shopping cart full of books took them all home now in my life taking care of two kids because even though i had my partner he was really taking care of what he felt he needed to and the yard work, and I took care of the inside of the house, the cooking, the cleaning, the children. So I didn't have much time to read. But after that experience, I was reading two and three books a week. I have no idea how I was doing it. It was like speed reading. Mm. (laughs) And then when I got through it, each page resonated with me. I understood it even though I knew nothing about it. It was very interesting to go it was almost like a deja vu, mm-hmm. right? And so the more I read, the more it helped me understand my feelings of why I was struggling and why I was angry. So even though many of us can look at that person as being the cause of our pain, actually we're the cause of our own pain, our own perception of what we think they should be doing, how, why we can't get what we want, Well, maybe if we think back about our upbringing, did your father or mother ever say money doesn't grow on trees, you know, things like that, which is keeping you from the abundance that you want because we as adults forget to let go of what we as children decided to own or say or believe. If you have a parent that's abusive for, let's even say 10 years of your life, right? Mm -hmm. You have 10 years of subconscious state of thinking that, let's say if it's a father, it's an example because there can be some mothers, but a father is an abuser for 10 years and that's the pattern you only know. So most of the time, I said most, not all, that a person will attract an abusive partner when they have an abusive parent. And the abuse can be emotional too. So until they're willing to say, I forgive that person, and it's not It's not the forgiveness of saying they're getting away with it. It's the forgiveness of you saying this no longer is owning me or controlling me. So I let it go and then move on to what you truly want and creating what you truly want. And with someone that has had a parent that's abusive or challenges in that respect, they have to shift how they think. And they have to love themselves more and value yourselves more. So that's where setting boundaries come in and being more grateful and all those things. Okay. I'm going to take a break here and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about your book. And we're also going to talk about uh, what's in the future for Terry Christine, what you have going on now and what you want to be doing in the future. So, man. (laughs)
So that's part one of my conversation with intuitive energy healer, Terry Christine. Part two will be released within the next two weeks. Please subscribe to the show and it will automatically post to your feed. I'd like to thank Terry for coming down to my office in Potomac, Maryland to record this episode. I learned a lot. I hope you did too. If you want to contact Terry, please go to her website, terrychristine.com. That's T-E-R-R-I-E-C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E.com. A link is also in the show notes. While I'd like to call this a one-man show, there are actually several people that I need to thank because without them, this little project would not be a reality. Thank you to Max Bachman and the wonderful people down at the Bethesda Salt Cave. Salt therapy has been used for eons and it has been thought to help in alleviating all sorts of ailments. Visit the Bethesda Salt Cave to learn about the different aspects of Himalayan salt. The Bethesda Salt Cave is located in the heart of Bethesda at 4709 Montgomery Lane. For more information, go to their website, BethesdaSaltCave.com. Music for this episode was graciously supplied by Daniel Duffin, a.k.a. Dastan. You can find my interview with Dastan on my podcast channel. I'd love for you to listen to it. He's a pretty cool dude. My theme music, Tasty Freeze, that's it playing in the background, was written and performed by Cadillac Grip. If you're ever in the Boulder or Denver, Colorado area, go see Cadillac Grip play. Because if you ain't hip to the grip, you just ain't hip. If you like what you heard, please give me a five-star rating on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast. It helps the show grow, and that's the name of the game. We're trying to get this out to as many people as possible. And please tell your friends. And once again, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Thank you to my partner and editor for life, Joan, a.k.a. The Notorious Jay-Z. And I must thank my mother and Jack the Black Pug. The Real Estate Wine and More podcast was written, recorded, mixed, produced, and screwed up by me. I'm Howard Fletcher. See you next time. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. You know I like to party, y'all. And when I do, And I smoke that wacky weed to get satisfied, but it's all the same. See, I drink that 800 to get high in that. And I smoke that wacky weed to get satisfied, but it's all the same.